Suitcase, a short story by Sarah Jane McKenzie. Stuart was having real financial difficulties when he heard from his aunt that his father had sadly died. His landlord had increased the rent some time ago and somehow it was seeming to his landlord that it was he, Stuart, who was the one who ought to pay the council tax. That had resulted in a number of arguments over the telephone wherein his landlord, Patrick Simons, had tried to push him, Stuart, into seeming rude or losing his temper. Stuart was therefore, though actually quite heavily depressed by the news of his father's death, since he had also been feeling he had very few friends, and the friends he did have were behaving like competitive enemies, relieved and rather intrigued to learn that his father had had a bank account in Luxembourg which ought to follow through with releasing to Stuart some money. Several months later and after a few telephone calls to the bank in Luxembourg, which always seemed to be on a faulty line, wherein he could hardly hear the bank executive at the other end of the phone, though he had always been careful to recognise that phone calling was indeed a miracle of sorts. He remembered playing with Paul in his parents' back garden with paper cups and a stretch of rope, and somehow over the stretch of rope they could hear each other clearly, miraculously, until Paul had then upset him by calling him Stu, which rather more because he had seen it graffitied into a subway in Leeds one day when it had been a thunderstorm above, and he'd been frightened and drenched and which had upset him so greatly that he had later wondered whether it might be worth changing his name. He decided he ought to try and secure enough money to travel via aeroplane to Luxembourg to converse there about his dad's account in person. His mum, whenever she and his dad had gone on holiday, had always been really very nervous indeed about the packing and what to pack. Maybe she had feared that her husband would blame her if they had not got the necessary when in a foreign country, and if she had not planned ahead accurately. She had begun packing a suitcase every time at least two weeks prior to the holiday and it must have been difficult in those days to gauge what the weather would be like in their intended destination and whether they would need diacalm tablets fearing an attack of toilet troubles prompted by dodgy food or not and whether they ought to take spare toilet roll with them and sachets of dried milk. Stuart had loved his mum very much. She had always been supportive and kind with her words to him, and he guessed later that she might have preferred him to engage with delusions rather than become too cynical too soon. 
She had not been to blame for the stew graffiti, but had always called him treasure. In fact, he could hardly remember a time when his mum had voiced his name. He had presumed, on thinking about it, that she had been forced into calling him Stuart against her own inclination. He had been thinking for some time that most people called Stuart must already have changed their names, hoping that they had not all for some reason mysteriously died young. Then in 2021, he had heard on the radio that it only costs about £12 to pay to change your name legally here in the UK. He had been shocked. He wondered whether the entire legal framework was now a con artist game, if it might be so easy for anyone, including foreigners just arrived in the country and wanting to stay here, to change their names into John Pearson or something, having spent a few years learning English so well in their own countries that no one might assume they were a foreigner when they had successfully paid up the £12 and formed a club to give each other administrative jobs. An invasion by stealth was not unlikely. Stuart booked a three-night stay in a Luxembourg hotel online and tried not to have a nervous breakdown about the packing, hoping that there might still be safely some assumptions which might be allowable. On the way to the airport, he ran out of petrol. Having missed a turn at a motorway junction and being thoroughly confused by the signage. <laughs>